developing and using models in the next generation science standards. This practice builds on students' prior experiences. So, what constitutes a model? For kindergarten through second grade, models could be diagrams, drawings, physical replicas, mathematical representations, analogies, or computer representations. For grades three through five, those models are going to build on the kindergarten through second grade experiences. And students are going to build and revise simple models and then use those models to represent events and design solutions. K through two students will be able to distinguish between a model and the actual object, process, or events the model represents. They'll be able to compare models to identify common features and differences. Those K-2 students will develop and use a model to represent amounts, relationships, relative scales, and patterns in the natural and design worlds. They'll be able to develop a simple model based on evidence to represent a proposed object or tool. In grades 3 through 5, students will be able to identify limitations of models. They'll be able to work together to develop and revise the model based on evidence that shows the relationships among the variables for frequent and regular occurring events. They'll be able to develop a model using an analogy, example, or abstract representation to describe a scientific principle or design solution. They'll also be able to develop and use models to describe and predict phenomena. Those grades 3 through 5 students will also be able to develop a diagram or simple physical prototype to convey a proposed object, tool, or process. They'll be able to use a model to test cause and effect relationships or interactions concerning the functioning of a natural or designed system. So what do science models do? They represent a system or parts of a system under study. They aid in the development of questions and explanations. They generate data that can be used to make predictions. And they communicate ideas to others. Engineering models could analyze a system to see where or under what conditions flaws might develop, test possible solutions to a problem, visualize and refine a design to communicate a design's features to others, or be prototypes for testing design performance. Now you might be wondering what developing models might look like in your own classroom. Let's consider this. Let's say you're a middle school teacher and your class was studying the solar system. You want them to develop a model to compare the different worlds in our solar system, but how do you do that? Studying the planets, each student would be asked to use their knowledge of the solar system to create a proportional model using Plato. Students would be given Play-Doh, a plastic knife, wax paper, and directions on how to shape the sizes of their planets. This covers the middle school earth and space science standard as well as our science practice of developing models and can be easily adapted to younger grades.